So if you think about the vastness of YouTube and how far your video will reach, you know, being in the U.S., my video reaches all the way to Europe, Argentina, places that I've never even heard of when I look at my YouTube analytics. It's, it's kind of cool. But when it comes down to the fact that someone local to me sees my video and then sends me an email and actually hires me to do the job, it's kind of hard to fathom that I can actually get work from creating content like this. I try my best not to link my company's business name to this account just because of the, the little bit of hints of my business and its phone number throughout my videos. I've gotten calls from people um, in Texas, Tennessee, Georgia, uh, Oklahoma, Oregon, California. It's just crazy and a lot of, a lot of people from Texas really. Um, but what we're going to go do today is I had a gentleman uh, send me an email uh, probably like two weeks ago, kind of forgot about it with the influx of work that we've had and uh, just spoke with him today and luckily I had a short day today. It's been great weather, but uh, we had to go prep three job sites for three new wells that we're going to drill. So that's what we did today. And uh, this gentleman says that he's having water quality issues, uh, muddy water after rain with the amount of rain we've got. Uh, it seems like to be a very, very common problem. So rather than going home at three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to head the opposite direction, head to this gentleman's house. I've got my dogs in the back seat. There's Mandy. And there's Ginger hiding in the floor. For anybody who didn't know, I take my dogs to work every single day. They hang out at the shop, and then on the way home, I put them back in the truck and we go home. So they're going to go with me there, and then uh, after that, I'll go straight home. So I'm going to take y'all along with me and uh, show you the process of working on a subscriber as well. It's kind of cool. Tim, how you doing? Good, Philip. How are you doing? Doing man? well, doing well. Where's, your, where's the well at? Straight back there. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, this part. You know, it would almost feel like there's a leak out here for as much water, but the amount of rain that we've had. Okie my dokie. Wife, my wife left the cover off while it was raining. What did they do here? They ran three quarter inch pecs to the house? Did you hook this up or did they hook this up? They hooked this up. Oh my God. That is not good. Why did they do that? Do y'all get do y'all have pressure problems? Pressure is not great. Yeah, but... I would assume it's not. There, there's not much you're gonna get <laughs> out of that, especially the long run. I don't know why they do that. It's amazing how many different uh, ways people do stuff. <laughs> That's the way to put it. Okie dokie. Two gallons a minute. Static twenty sixty foot of casing. Five hundred foot deep. Okay, and pump installer. They put, what did they do? It's a Goulds, it's a five gallon a minute, and they put it at 420 feet, and they put it in on 822, okay. One horsepower, five gallon a minute pump with three quarter inch PEX line going down in the ground to the house. That's just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay. I'm gonna say the first thing we're gonna do, we'll do a water test, and then we'll come out here and we'll mess with that. May get cloudy. Right there, that's that's probably pushback from the tank. That's one stiff garden hose. Let's fill up a bucket and see what it looks like. Yeah, she's a little yellow. It could be turbidity coming in from groundwater. But yeah, three quarter inch feed to the house. That should have never happened. That, sh that, that should not be allowed. It should be one inch PVC all the way to the house. Or one inch black roll all the way to the house. Hmm. Not three quarter. Three quarter inch feed should be what's ran as your like main trunk line for the household plumbing. Not, not the main feed from the well to the house. Cause you're only gonna get like seven gallon a minute flow through that pipe and a one inch you'll get like 12 13 so by the time you turn on three faucets in the house you've maxed out the 
the plumbing. When I had to, after the, so part, um, this might be relevant actually. When we, um, first before we did any filtering or did anything or really had this issue, you know, we got the, uh, my lender required a, a clean water test. Yeah. So did the water test and it came back with, um, with the uh, coliform, coliform positive for total yep. coliform. Very common. Um, so we're like, okay, well, it had never been, those are loose and that's my fault. That's the end of my story. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the, the one on your know, right is but good. I know, I know. So the half moon piece here, there's also one down below. Yep. So when you took that off, the it half moon, the, I think it's still there because there's that rubber sandwich in between. If I can pull this bolt out. I think it's wedged. It's I, know, I know it's not connected, but I didn't hear any splash. God. I was here when it happened. This sucks. This is dangerous. How's that dangerous? Because it, those I'm things are the only thing that keeps it from falling. You see, this piece here doesn't do no, yeah. no locking anymore. Okay. Yeah. We might fix that today. I might. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah, so, see, it's right there. Actually. Ooh, we you got lucky. That isn't my lucky day. Yeah, it's your lucky day. They ran the wire through it. Because if it was the vent side of things, man, that would be a nightmare. Okay, shine your light back down in there. You think I can? One of us might have long enough arms. I think your arms are bigger than mine. My arm can I fit. I do it's, not it's want this long. thing to jump. Shit, I'm still 12 inches. Yeah. Um, I got a. Uh, need a good magnet. I might actually, actually have one. I might actually have one. If you don't. But. Uh, I don't have a magnet. We need to fix that before we. I do. I drop do it. have a grabber though, like literally one of those trash picker upper grabber things. That might work. That might work. Yeah, you never take the bolts out. <laughs> I learned that after. I was. I pulled it up to try and. Uh, do the I know. I get it. Yeah. Yep. Whoo, you got lucky. Lucky, lucky. Alright, so for anybody who's having a question as to what went on here, the uh, half moon piece down here is gone. And luckily, it's still on over here. See that piece right there? So, luckily, they still have it on this side. But the other piece is down about three or four feet i'm not sure if you can see it oh yeah you can see it right there there it is it's hanging on the wire luckily they ran the wire through it and uh and it's still there so we need to try to grab that because if i hit it with the camera and it keeps falling hopefully they they uh they taped the wire to the pipe like i always talk about it's a good idea of doing and um uh, it is just cold out here. I'm gonna go get a coat. Let's see. Yeah, you hold the light, that way we don't drop nothing. Yeah. Come here, baby. Yeah, look at that. They're like this thing was made made for this job. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it doesn't probably have a great grip, but hopefully we'll I, get got it. I got around it. Okay. There we go. There you go. so lucky because this th these things cause me so much problem I know I was... because the pump it'll trap the pump in the well it'll oh, go down shit. and wedge against the pump yeah. and you it's a block of steel yeah there's no way of getting it out I had seen it might have been in one of your videos or something like it seems like there's a lot better designs than this kind of yeah workout. yeah that yeah I don't install these I put in uh solid one piece but they're rare all right let's see if we can get that puppy back in there yeah my head out of the that's a good day man that could have been so bad
Okay, you see bolts there and you just assume that, uh, oh, I take those off and lift that up. Yeah. Yeah. They should have put something on there like do not remove. Like, if you buy the more expensive type of well seal, they drill holes through the bolts and put little wires through it. So oh. when you back them out, it stops it. Right, safety wire. Then they got lazy and they were like, oh, you know, we don't have to pay a guy to drill these holes anymore. We'll just put the bolts in there and not worry about it. If you want, go ahead and uh, let's run as much water as we can. All right. Turn it on and let her run. For as fast as that water level just came back up when the pump was off, that tells me that it's faster than two gallons a minute because it would raise slower. I wouldn't have right. to pull my camera up. So, do you think that could that have anything to do with all the rain? Well, if it's if the casing is leaking, then the well theoretically should make more water. Mm. It should fill up faster because it's right. filling up with surface water. Right. Maybe it makes two gallons a minute of water out of the aquifer, right. but it's making two or three from wherever it's coming in at. Right. All right, in 15 seconds, it made a gallon and a half. So in 30 seconds, it would make three gallons. In one minute, it would make six gallons. So right now, it's probably making five to six gallons a minute. Okay. I did kind of did the math when yeah. it shut off actually pretty good picture in a picture there all right so now we're gonna go down we've got to be getting near the bottom of the casing I'm starting to see swirl marks in the casing you see that swirl mark right there so that uh -huh. swirl mark is where a, uh, a big rock came up during the initial hammer and it started to scar the side of the casing what you typically find in situations like that or the PVC casing couldn't withstand all that jagged rock and you'll find a crack in the PVC casing. Right. So that's what I'm looking for now. Yeah, I got swirl marks all the way around. I'm wondering if I'm going to find broken casing down here. The swirl marks just keep happening. Yeah, now they're getting really, really aggressive. All right, I got a really jagged. Jagged spot right there, big old deep cut. My marks, because it's it's either really really rough PVC casing or that's like rock borehole. Oh, meaning we're we're past. Okay, the there we go. No, we're still in plastic pipe. Okay. I believe it's cracked right there. Okay. I believe. And so what we should do, we should start... See, yep, yep, there it is. I was going to say, we're getting to the point where we should see water percolating in. So we get we get water percolating in right there. Yeah. You see it? That there right at the top? Yeah, uh -huh, right at the top. I can't move my camera because it's just hung, you know? Right. But yeah, so we are getting, we are getting water in right there. Yep. And that's right where the PVC casing meets the bedrock. And it's dumping in more over on this side. But the camera follows the path of wherever the borehole goes, so I can't move my camera over. Right. At least I don't think I can. I might get lucky and reposition it. But yeah, that, that plastic casing looks like it's cracked. Maybe 10 inches above where the seat is. Mm -hmm. But there's not really any, any issue there. Right. But yes, we're getting a trickle flow there. So what we're going to do, we're going to go down in the borehole. And we're going to see how much water rains on top of us and see if we see any more big veins of water dumping in yeah i knew this was going to happen as soon as i get water on top of me it just it clouds up my uh my camera and my image unfortunately that's what we got to deal with so yeah, so now I'm down in the water and you can see just how murky the water is. If it was crystal clear, I'd be able to see. Right. And then we come back up, shake the camera off for a minute. I can see for a quick second. But then what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull it all the way back up above where it was leaking from. But at least we know definitively that the casing is leaking. Right. We can actually see it, so we know that there is a problem. 
and that's going to be giving you all of your troubles for your surface water. I believe what we're seeing there, whatever that weird thing is, that yeah. may be like a piece of uh, plastic, uh, a piece of the inside of the casing, right. like a it's shaving. Off, yeah. uh, yep, yeah. like a shaving, and yeah. it's shaved off, and it's just hanging there. I can see sprinkles coming yeah. from that side. Yeah, oh, it was the first image you had, it was flowing in real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna say like what I visibly see there, um, you're getting about a half a gallon a minute on the the left side and maybe you know something equivalent on the other side yeah so oh yeah look at that. yep you can see it it's peeing off pretty good yeah so that's bringing in surface water it's bringing in rainwater yeah that's giving you all your troubles because see now it's going down and it's mixing yeah and it's stirring up the water so we found out what we needed to know unfortunately you have a 400 foot pump so in order to do this i have to pull that bitch out which i hate so, so what are the options then for? Um, it needs a liner. Okay. You need a liner. What is? Essentially, you're gonna recase the well. Right. So the casing that's in the well now goes down to 60 foot, and it leaks. Yeah. So we're gonna put on uh, basically a rubber boot, and that rubber boot is connected to four inch pipe, and that four inch pipe is gonna go down to say 70 feet. And the rubber boot's going to be connected to it. And the rubber boot is going to keep all the dirty water above the rubber boot and all the clean water below the rubber boot. So the two do not mix. And so the pump it, goes through the 4-inch. But it doesn't go below the, the boot? Yes, the pump will go back to 400 feet. Okay. Yep. It's a separating device. But if the separating device is above the pump... Oh, so anything... I see what Pipe you're saying. Pipe hollow. So I the see pump what you're goes through it. So you're gonna it's you're gonna go below the current casing. Yep. And seal it off. But the center of the seal is hollow. Right. And it's connected yep. to all the four inch pipe. So that also would that also presume that you don't have groundwater leaking from further down in the hole? Uh if so what I do, the way I do it, the law states you have to cement in a liner. Right? You have okay. to cement one in. The same way you had to grout this between the pipe and the dirt. I have to do the same thing. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna install it and I'm gonna let you use it for six weeks. And that rubber seal will do just as fine, same as the cement, but the rubber seal isn't permanent. It allows you to test it. If you call me in six weeks and say, hey, my water's clear, it hasn't gotten dirty, hasn't, you know, all this rain, blah, 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 no problem, cool, I'll come back, then I cement it in. Yeah. But you need 70 feet. I just went and did one yesterday. 70 feet needs a 70 foot liner. Yeah. Yeah. All this rain that we've had, it, it's doing it to all the wells. Yeah. Any of them that it's not a perfect seal, and that's really not the well driller's fault. It just sucks. So what we do, and the only reason we do it is because we've been doing. Dad's been doing it since '82. He learned that plastic pipe can't handle the abuse of the hammer. Right. because of what you saw in the well. Right. So we put a seven foot piece of metal and we connect it to the plastic. Yeah. So that seven foot piece of metal takes all the abuse down there right. and it does a better job. Yeah. But that's what we do. Yeah. I don't think, I've, I've made videos on my transition plastic to metal and I've had well drillers like, I didn't even know they made that. <laughs> like, yeah, I believe like, it. they make a coupling that glues to metal. Like, <laughs> yeah, kind of, but it works. Right. It works great. But, you know, a percussion of a hammer of a six inch bit against rock, like any other yeah. hammer drill, is violent. And then you put plastic pipe around it and expect that to take all the abuse from all the chips? Yeah. You're really asking a lot. Negative ghost rider. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're asking a lot out of that pipe. So, um, is the house still running? The, the one up there is, yeah. I'm afraid this thing's gonna be heavy. Kinda. Come on. You need a hand? You want me to cut it off up there, or what do you want me to do? Need the well to fill back up. All right. There we go. I just gotta go get. You want to cut that off? Yes. 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 Eat, 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 eat. Okay. We got it. We got it. We got it. Okay. Back now. Woo! All right. Well, we know we need a well liner. Plain and simple. Okie dokie.
Well, that was fun. Shout out to Viver, their camera. I've been putting it to work. Let's go ahead and cover his well back up so it doesn't freeze. Not like you really need to worry about with that PEX pipe. So, I assume you had your system freeze up. Nope. Wanted to make sure it didn't. Okay. You need to seal this really good and cover this lip with dirt. Okay. Or, or like mulch or sand or right. something. This is an igloo. Yeah. Every time the water level in the well goes down, it pulls air into the well. Uh, the well is always 50 degrees down in the ground. Right. So when the pump stops and the water level comes back up, it goes and pushes out 50 degree air. As long as the air stays trapped under the rock, it will not freeze. Okay. That's that's the only way to prevent it from freezing. Nice to know. Yep. But yeah, mulch, two bags of mulch or the grit yeah. or whatever. It, it's easy to kick off. Whenever. What, what, what would it run for you to do it when? A liner? Okay. Yeah. Um, probably like end of the day cost around 3,000. Okay. Because a liner, we quote liners at 60 foot, and we already know yours is going to need 70, so it's going to be a little bit more. Sure. Um, liners are things that take me, at this point, it'll be four different trips out here. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. it's a lot of time. Yeah. It's time consuming, and the only reason they're time consuming is because I could do it in a day. But if it didn't work, yeah. you'd pay me that money, and I couldn't do anything about it. I right, can't push it deeper. It. Right. I couldn't pull it out because it's already cemented. So, I come here on day one, I camera the well, I figure out that it needs it. Day two, I come back, I install the line. Yep. Third time I come back is after it's been two months and I pump cement. I have to leave that first batch of cement and allow it to set up. <clears throat> then I come back a fourth time, I pump another batch of cement down there. Then I cut it off and you won't even know it's there. And it, I cut it below the six inch. I put your well seal back on. I hook it all back up like normal. Mm -hmm. And then the rock goes back on. Yeah. But until then, there's a four inch pipe sticking out of your well about this far. There's a clamp. The plumbing comes up and then right. hooks up so it kind of looks like it's being worked on. Right. Which is it's cool, it's totally but fine. it's not a good idea right now because it's still getting down to 25 and 30 degrees in the winter. Oh, I see what you're you know? saying. Gotcha. So if we give it, you know, four weeks of drying time, that would be great. <laughs> but um, yeah. I have to bring a trailer mounted cement mixer close enough to this well to where I can. Yeah. I don't really know how I'm gonna get here, but um, we can deal with that at yeah. that point. But we can line the well yeah. without getting a trailer here. I just gotta carry it in. Yeah. Um, but when it comes time to put cement in the well, I yeah. am gonna have to get at least to the chicken pen. I hate this because it's a 400 foot well, or it's a 400 foot pump. Yeah. That's a, I've at minimum, I've helped, I have to pull it out once. I've I've helped a friend pull their pump out, and it wasn't 400 foot, and it wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Talk to your guy. Yep. See if you want to have him do it. If not, I don't um, want to have him do it, but if he'll pay for it, ain't no way or whatever. I, I mean, it'd be great. So, what is, great. what is the standard as far as casing? Because when actually I spoke with my builder and he just kind of talks quick, so he's what, probably just talking what quick. What county are we in? He said, he We're said the standard is 100 feet no. for casing. No. We're in Grand Lake. All right, so there's three classifications of well a 3B. 3C and a 3A. Typically, most houses are 3C, minimum 20 foot casing. Okay. You set casing where you encounter right. this. Right. That is what industry. Is yeah. Okay. So you know, there's not a definitive. Oh, you need this. Right. It's whenever you run into that. If you run into that at 12 feet, you got to drill it to 21 feet so you can set 20 foot minimum. Mm. If you have a classification 3B well which means you have a three quarters of an acre lot, a giant house, and your well is a little bit too close to your septic system, that's when they make you put in 50 feet of casing. Mm. Yours is still deeper than that. Yeah. <clears throat> Yours was probably a 3C, minimum 20 foot. They still put 61 foot of casing in it, yeah. and it still leaks. Which I paid for. <clears throat> I, yeah. This wasn't inclusive. I paid all I'm gonna this I'm going to say that's like a, probably a thirteen or $15,000 well. Yeah. You know, so it's, it is. I paid an extra like five or six grand on top of what he included. Yeah. Went deep. 
That's right. So and it'd be, be no different from me. Yeah. No, I understand. I, no, I mean, I'm. It's all. It's all reasonable. Drilling I'm equipment for a million dollars, man. Oh yeah, I saw that shit. Out it's here. not the best business to be in, but when it is, like, you have to work it or you have to sell it one or the other. Yeah. You can't afford to hold on to it. Yeah. I see that. My fingers are going numb. My fingers are going numb.